Creating tension through music is something that a lot of games do differently. Tension doesn't always stay in horror or thriller games, it can be in pretty much any game genre. The way tension is built up using music can be done in several different ways, the most common being increasing the tempo and volume of the music as events play out. The first thing that sticks out in my mind when thinking about this type of buildup is the Dead by Daylight terror radius and chase music. In Dead by Daylight, the killer has a terror radius with unique music for that killer. The music for the terror radius differs depending on how close the killer is to you, breaking into a full chase theme when the killer finds you. Some killers have better chase music than others, but the same tension is built with each one. There is a specific fight or flight reaction you need to have when you begin hearing that music, and each could bring you to safety or send you to your death. The Doctor comes to mind specifically for me as I feel his music is the most effective at building tension personally. A lot of his perks have to do with manipulating the terror radius, which adds more tension to an already tense situation. The droning noises when you are in the furthest part of his terror radius always put me on edge. Knowing all he has to do to find me is press a single button. The closer he gets to you, the more the music picks up and distorted guitar begins to enter the fray. Typically, this doesn't last long before more distorted droning noises begin to play, and the fear inside you builds all culminating in him finding you and the track erupting into action. I find these moments with every killer to be the worst. Your attempts at hiding have been thrown to waste and now you are in a fight for your life, knowing slipping up during chase means going on hook and causing your team to suffer the consequences as a result. When you are being chased, the terror radius music still plays, almost like it's letting you know that you can escape death, but only if you play things out well. Other games use their music to build tension in other ways. Games like Cry of Fear and Silent Hill have tracks that play outside of encounters that make it seem like an enemy could be around any corner. Their music is debatable as to whether or not it's actually music, but I personally believe that it counts. The music itself is often dark and violent, including distortions and screams, the sounds of monsters and their victims seemingly just around the corner. It makes it seem like you will run into danger at any turn, making each step as tense as the last. Then, at other times, the music cuts off completely, and the tension shifts from the music to the lack of it. Complete silence after hearing screams and distorted wailing can seem even worse than when the sounds were playing. In these moments, it feels like the game is trying to tell you that you've walked right into a trap, and sometimes, you have. For Cry of Fear, I think specifically to the apartments at the start of the game and the forest towards the end of the game. In these parts of the game, there is very little background noise, only playing some ambient natural tracks while you traverse through the area. Then, seemingly at random, an enemy suddenly screeches and attacks you, spiking your heart rate and putting you into fight or flight. Dead Space is a game that does this well. Throughout the game, the player is bombarded with the echoes of necromorphs crawling throughout the spaceship that the game takes place on. Most of the time, the music is just ambient background stuff. Things like the ship groaning, or the creepy atmospheric tracks that are accompanied by Isaac's breathing. I know this isn't exactly silence, but when the rest of the music sounds like this... ...then I wouldn't exactly consider the background noise to be loud or upfront. When I played Dead Space, it was during these moments that I felt the most vulnerable, like something was about to pop up at any moment, around any corner, ready to tear me limb from limb. As the game went on, this only became more and more of a fear for me, as the number of enemies in different areas increased. You never knew when something was about to attack you or from where, but you kind of knew it was going to happen soon, just not when. The ambience of the ship often tricking me into thinking something was about to pounce at me, but most of the time, nothing ever did. Sometimes, the lack of music is the best thing to build tension in a world where anything could kill you if you make a wrong step. There is a specific era of gaming that I come back to when I think about how game soundtracks implant fear into you. That era being the late 90s, when the PS2 and Nintendo 64 were the kings of gaming consoles. During this time period, especially on the Nintendo 64, games had less to work with for their audio, so they had to drop their audio quality in favor of optimizing storage. This made for some of their spooky tracks to become even spookier. The theme from Big Boo's Haunt, or the mansion theme in Mario 64, is one that I'm sure many people remember well. It is unexpected considering the rest of the music in the game is lighthearted and cheery. Then you just get this foreboding track that sinks itself into your head. The low-pitched choir, cymbal shaking, and fast-paced xylophone all make up the music we all heard when going through this level as kids. I believe a lot of what makes this music tense is from how young most of us were when we played the game, and the normal objects that turned against us in the mansion, like the books and that stupid piano on the first floor. These things all made for a fairly frightening experience for me as a kid, and I remember it all clearly to this day. 
The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is another Nintendo 64 classic that has some pretty tense themes in it. I'm sure everyone who's played the game remembers the re enemies well. First found in the Royal Tomb, the re make for an especially eerie encounter. The theme of the tomb itself is unnecessarily frightening. The theme plays out like something you would hear in Resident Evil or Silent Hill. But this is a Legend of Zelda game. Those aren't supposed to be scary, right? The re add more to what is already an especially scary experience. Their moaning and screams when they paralyze you makes going through these areas daunting. The Shadow Temple is another area with a theme as a kid that I really didn't like. I remember the dungeon itself wasn't super long, but it felt like it took longer when I was constantly trying to figure out where the enemies were and how to get past the traps and various re that were also down there. Not to mention that one boss, you know what I'm talking about. Both Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time were composed by Koji Kondo, the main composer for Nintendo. Koji Kondo's work is some of the best I've heard in the era of early 3D gaming. Without him, we wouldn't have had any of these songs and wouldn't have been scared nearly as badly as kids who just wanted to have some fun exploring Hyrule or Peach's Castle. The Resident Evil series is something I've covered a lot on this channel and is one of my favorite game series of all time. Its overall focus on survival horror and action has kept me with it throughout the years. The first one I ever played being Resident Evil Revelations. Revelations at the time was sort of a return to horror for the series. Its setting, enemies, and soundtrack all bringing the horror theme back to an otherwise action-oriented series. The music in Revelations really sets the stage and while for the most part, it is full of more beautiful orchestral tracks. It also includes some fairly eerie ones as well. In the moments where these songs are playing, the stage is set for an adventure throughout an abandoned cruise liner, floating out in the open ocean, filled with unspeakable horrors and a mystery to discover. The tone of darkness and decay is especially prominent in the guest rooms and the parts of the ship that were meant to see the least public use. The enemies also do a lot for the tension in Revelations, as they are nothing like any of the standard enemies we've fought before. I mean, look at this. This is the basic enemy you find everywhere, and it's terrifying. It bears only a slight amount of resemblance to the human it once was. Going up from here, it doesn't get much better. They slither out of air vents and stumble around corners when you least expect them. To this day, I personally find these enemies to be the best in the franchise simply because of how they look and behave. Their oozing bodies overflowing with mutated infection are matched by the soundtrack, as its tracks also have a sort of ooze to them, flowing disturbingly around the various hallways of the Queen Zenobia. The entire thing makes for a tense, daunting experience that I will always love playing through, even if it does fall flat at points throughout the game. I love horror, and find these songs to be incredible tools at building up fear in the player. Tension is something that I've found isn't executed nearly as well in games these days, and would like to see more of going forward. That feeling of always being watched, like someone or something is hunting you at all times. I will never get tired of it. And the scores that these games use do so much more for those moments than you may think. Building up that tension, raising the stakes even if there are none. It all makes for an experience that feels dire and threatening and I will always treasure those moments.